powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your Monday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, Main Street businesses across Montana make major moves to open their doors today, allowing in customers and getting the economy rolling. Well, tonight we check in with a couple of local businesses to see how the day went and how they're coping with the changes. And Governor Steve Bullock urges all Montanas to continue practicing social distancing and wearing masks in public. Well, those stories in just a moment, but first a late night billing shooting is now considered a homicide investigation. Police Lieutenant Dave Cardillo says the 50 year old Billings man died shortly after he was shot last night. It happened just before 10 p.m. in the front yard of a home in the 100 block of South 31st Street. The man was taken to a local hospital and died. Cardillo says no suspects are in custody. He says investigators are talking with witnesses and reviewing surveillance video. The victim's name has not yet been released. Another Montana man has died from complications due to COVID-19. This marks the first COVID-19 death in Gallatin County and the 15th across Montana. The state also reports one more confirmed positive case of coronavirus today. That person is here in Yellowstone County. 449 people have tested positive, 352 of those have recovered. Well, late this afternoon, Wyoming announced it now has 19 confirmed coronavirus cases today. Wyoming's numbers are growing much faster recently with more than 38 new cases in the past several days. So far, 389 people have tested positive for COVID-19 and seven people have died. Public health orders remain in place in Wyoming until Thursday. While Montana reported just a single case of confirmed coronavirus today, most neighboring states are dealing with rapid increases. South Dakota added another 65 cases, jumping its total to more than 2,200. North Dakota also added 64 cases. Idaho added another 10. Well, today was a big day across the region as the state begins to lift its stay at home order and allow Main Street and retail businesses to put their we're open signs back in the window. Q2's Russ Riesinger headed out for a little hair and retail therapy. Traffic was the heaviest it's been in weeks along Grand Avenue in Billings as retail shops and other businesses once again opened their doors. Business wasn't exactly brisk at Rimrock Mall, but a steady stream of people could be seen going in and out throughout the day. After being, uh, you know, sequestered, if you will, for uh, for five weeks, six weeks, it's, uh, it's fun to see the, you know, the the. Uh, the merchants, the customers, the mall walkers, the community back out, and uh, so it's been uh, it's been good. Right now, a little less than a third of the stores in the mall are open, just 19 of 65. But Hartley expects that number to start picking up. I think that uh, largely most of the folks are, uh, are are observing the social distancing. Uh, uh, I think that they take it serious. I think the community takes it serious, uh, and so uh, so it's been fun. It's been fun to get back out and interact. At the Great Clips, people stood outside in line to wait for a haircut. Only five people are allowed inside at a time. Businesses and billings are being asked to be part of the safe and open campaign. And so the idea is that businesses will take that pledge to be open and safe and create an environment for their staff and for customers uh, to feel comfortable and safe while they're doing business. In Billings, Russ Riesinger reporting for MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Russ. Now you can visit the yceconomicrecovery.org to download those signs and be a part of the safe and open campaign. Well, beginning next week, bars, restaurants, and casinos can also open with restrictions. The governor's order allows local jurisdictions to set more strict requirements, like in Missoula County, where salons will not open until phase two. The state does not have a hard date for when phase two might begin. The unemployment impact on Montana is best told through numbers. We can report tonight that more than 66,000 Montanans have filed claims through April 18th. We have gone from an unemployment rate of 3.5% last month to more than 12% today. The number of claims is up 575% in a month. It's a similar story in Yellowstone County, where we have seen unemployment claims rise from just over 1,200 last month to almost 10,000 by the middle of April. In one week, more than 3,700 people filed for unemployment in the county. Well, the Montana Department of Labor is trying to process all of the claims, but is facing a challenge that it says it is not set up to handle. And you can catch all of these stories on the Rebound series on our website, 
KTVQ.com. Well, some schools across the Billings area have already made the decision to not return to class for the rest of the school year. Other districts will make that decision as school board meetings over the course of this week. QT's Mitch Laggy joins us now with an update. Mitch. For Billings area schools, the decision on whether or not to reopen for in-person classes has been left up to local school boards. In their discussions, school boards will take into account whether or not social distancing can be had at their individual school buildings. Here's a preview of some of the area board meetings tonight. For the Billings Public Schools, the board will discuss tonight on whether to resume in-person classes. Similar discussions will be had tonight in Laurel, Joliet, and Columbus as well. Other schools that have made the decision to continue online include Lockwood, Shepherd, Huntley Project, and Red Lodge. According to Phase 1 of Montana Governor Steve Bullock's plan to reopen the state, schools across Montana have the option to resume in-person classes starting May 7th, although it seems like many in our area are continuing to stay online. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. All right, make sure to check back in tonight at 10 o'clock. Mitch will have the latest on school board decisions across the area. Well, close to 1,000 elective surgeries have been backlogged at Billings Clinic due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, starting tomorrow, patients who need surgery will have access to a special curbside pre-procedure testing center. Now patients will be tested from their cars and the center is located at North Broadway and 8th Avenue near same day care. In March, the clinic halted all elective surgeries, but now has a plan to phase surgical procedures back in the week of May 4th. That's next week. Now patients will also need to self quarantine between time they take this test and have their surgery. Those with Billings Clinic say dealing with this backlog of surgeries is calculated. Really, you know, working, um, you know, every day of the week with teams meeting to come up with how we're going to address this backlog. How do we get to these patients and catch up? But we don't want to go too fast and then create some type of surge with COVID. So it's just going to be a a, a real kind of uh, work for a little while, measure some benchmarks to see how we're doing, and then proceed in a stepwise phased manner. Testing samples from those elective procedure patients will go to Mayo Clinic for analysis and results will take about four to six business days. Well, Montana State in Bozeman is now on the front lines in the battle against coronavirus. Tonight, MTN's John Miller has that story. Montana State professor and researcher Blake Wiedenheft was recently granted $2.5 million from the National Institute of Health to aid in his research of microbiology and immunology. The big picture is, is that my lab's really been studying pandemics for over a decade. Wiedenheft studies bacteria's immune systems and how they fight infections. Most viruses on the planet don't infect people. They infect bacteria. And we want to know what happens when bacteria get sick and how bacteria fight off those viral infections. And what we're learning is that there's more similarities between the immune systems in bacteria and humans than we ever guessed. Studying bacteria can help humans develop ways to combat these infections. If bacteria make us sick, then if we know how bacteria fight off viral infections that make them sick, then maybe we can make drugs that make them more susceptible to viral infection. He is the second MSU professor in the last two years to be awarded the grant. It's something that sometimes goes a little bit underappreciated that there's world-class research that's happening at MSU. During a time like COVID-19, being in this line of work is rewarding. We love what we do, so it's... um. It's exciting work and we're driven to try to to deliver on those taxpayer resources. In Bozeman, John Miller, MTN News. Some good news. Thanks so much, John. Tonight on our 530 News, after the break, we are off to the races as attorney general candidates gear up for their Democratic primary. And in sports, Scott joins us from Dealer Park with new information on your Billings Mustangs. And coming up in weather, we had a few sprinkles today in the Billings area and temperatures are fairly comfortable. They'll stay comfortable tomorrow, but look at this. We jump up into the 80s on Wednesday and Thursday. We'll tell you all about it coming up in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.